the tradition will end. The question is, will it end before there's any sharks left? This place is not what it seems. At a glance, it's placid, beautiful even. Oh, you see the blood coming out? Look closer, and there's a battle raging. It takes 30 hours by boat to get from Costa Rica to Cocos Island, a small rectangular rock, part of Costa Rican territory that rises out of the Eastern Pacific. There are sharks there, lots of them. Scientists think more than any other place on Earth, in fact. That makes Cocos ground zero in the fight to save a species. We just arrived at Cocos Island, and we overheard the rangers say that there is a long line somewhere around here that has five or six dead sharks attached to it. We're on the lookout for buoys because fishermen usually attach their lines to them. It's illegal to fish within a 12-mile radius of the island. So we found the red buoy. But this line is less than a mile from shore. Is that silky? Who's got the cutters? Can you imagine if this is Yellowstone Park and people were queuing up to shoot the grizzlies? We never would ever get away with it because it's ocean, because it's out of sight, out of mind. It just carries on. Peter Knights is the co-founder of Wild Aid, an organization focused on exposing the illegal wildlife trade. His latest battle, yes. saving the shark. Sharks are probably one of nature's most successful designs. They've been on the planet for nearly 400 million years. They were designed at a time when there was no other species preying on them. Now human beings have entered the, the equation, and human beings are taking out sharks at unprecedented numbers, and they just can't cope. According to Wild Aid, nearly 100 million sharks are killed every year around the world. 100 million. They say the population of almost every species of shark has declined by more than 50% in the past 15 years. But so what, you might say? Why should we care? Because as a top predator in the food chain, when sharks disappear, ecosystems change. And when marine ecosystems change, entire fisheries and the billion-dollar economies built around them collapse. Think it can't happen? It has. The cod industry collapsed around New England in the 1990s and cost that region over a billion dollars. A similar collapse of salmon stocks happened this year on the West Coast, prompting the federal government to give more than 100 million in disaster aid. These are ecosystems that have evolved over millions and millions of years. And as soon as you start to take out an important part of it, it's like a, it's like a brick wall. You take out bricks, it's eventually it's going to collapse. The reason sharks are slaughtered might surprise you. It's for their fins, an industry the Humane Society says is worth more than $500 million. We'll tell you who wants those fins in a second, but first, how they're getting them which brings us back to Cocos Island and something called long lining. Miles and miles of fishing lines strung with thousands of hooks. It's cheap, easy, and very efficient at catching sharks. Look at that. Completely uh, wraps up in it. On this one line, there are 10 sharks. Two of them Knights is able to save but it's too late for the other eight. You want to get really depressed? Nothing. We're just going to check if it's pregnant. Well, there's a little baby there, you see. Including a female about to give birth to seven baby sharks called pups. This is one of how many long lines that are out around this island? There could be 20 or 30 lines in the, in the water, which means thousands and thousands of hooks. We've seen a whole new line of boys down here, so... Long lining for sharks is actually legal in international waters. That's it there, got it? That's a, a shark boat. Um, but even where it's illegal, like here, it's difficult to police. The week we spent around Cocos, we saw only one government patrol boat, and locals say it only shows up a few times a year. Give me 
We tried approaching these two fishing boats we spotted within three miles of the island to get their side of the story. No surprise, they didn't want to talk. Catching sharks can be extremely lucrative. A single whale shark fin can sell for more than $1,000. The rest of the shark is pretty much worthless. So to make more room for the valuable fins, fishermen often resort to a practice called finning. Cutting off the shark fins, then dumping the bodies into the water while they're still alive. They can't swim, so they sink to the bottom and die. All of this to make more room for fins on the boat. So where are all these fins going? The vast majority make their way to Asia, with many passing through Taiwan. So that's where we head next, to the port of Kaohsiung, reputed to be one of the world's main hubs for fins. Looks like they've got fins and bodies over here. But as a ship docks and begins to unload, it's clear shark finning isn't something they're interested in discussing. Don't touch the camera, buddy. Sir. Just get some more pictures of this and then I'll leave. Two more minutes. 